Hello there guys, what is going on? Daniel Childs back here again for my team selector ahead of the game against Burnley tomorrow afternoon at Stamford Bridge. The run-in begins here and Chelsea have a great opportunity to start that run-in by building some really good momentum against one of the weakest teams in this Premier League that we beat pretty comfortably away from home earlier in the season. And in terms of European qualification, in terms of the results we've seen from teams around us, above us, you know, we've noticed how quickly that gap can close if you just win your games, which, you know, sounds very simple. But especially at this time of the year with some of those teams, the likes of West Ham, the likes of Brighton that have kind of been flagging in recent weeks. Chelsea really need to capitalise on this because there is actually, you know, you can throw Man United in there too. But you look at Sheffield United, Everton, some of the teams we're playing in the next run of games are games simply maximum points are required it has to be maximum points if Chelsea have any hope of salvaging something from this season especially from a Premier League point of view team news wise I mean again it's the, it's the classic Chelsea injury problem and I feel like I'm repeating myself I, I spoke about this in the last Let's Talk Chelsea we spoke about Romeo Lavia I just think that obviously the news is that Trevor Chalabar and Connie Chukameka are on that injury list now. In terms of the severity of both, it's it sounds not you know drastically serious. It doesn't sound like they're going to be out for weeks and weeks. They could even make this game potentially. Um, but it just, again, it highlights how fragile this group of players is. And you look at that list that Chelsea have released from the start of the season, it's kind of, uh, you know, at the time, I know there was a justification from some inside the club of, of maybe releasing it because, you know, it gives a little bit more transparency it doesn't mean that players are technically always out and it gives a, a clear update because sometimes in press conferences, to be fair, we get very annoyed when reporters don't ask the head coaches about who's injured, who's fit and all of that stuff. But it's looked like a really obvious and damning indictment of the club's medical situation throughout the season because this list has always been at least five to six names full and at, at most it's been like 10 so it's back up there in terms of numbers and I also just think as kind of a, a side point as we head towards the summer maybe something that people don't factor in when we're talking about injuries about Chelsea currently is I do wonder if you're a young player maybe being uh, approached by Chelsea this summer if you're just any player really and you look at this injury issue that has grown and grown and so many players have been affected by it you must in the back of your head be thinking, and I'm sure even like player reps will be thinking this as well, is it actually a smart move to go to Chelsea? That's not even like talking about the ownership of the club, the chaos at the club. Just from an injury and fitness point of view, players will start to worry whether their careers could be halted by moving to Chelsea. And that is a horrible thing to even consider. But why wouldn't you, based on the evidence we have seen over the past year? And again, it just completely halts. Because if Chukwemeka isn't available for this game, it's it's a massive blow because that's a player pretty international break against Leicester who looked really exciting. Him and Cole Palmer linking up brilliantly. How could that player work, especially against deep defences for the rest of the season? So it is what it is. And unfortunately, I don't think it's going to massively be improved until the summer where it has to be focused on. But in terms of this game, in terms of Burnley, I mean, Burnley statistically, one of the worst teams in the Premier League. They've only won two away games all season. The last one of those coming before Christmas. And in terms of goals, that they haven't scored many. I think it's the second fewest in the Premier League this season. They've conceded the second most. Of course, Sheffield United leading the way, who Chelsea face next weekend away from home. So there is no excuse here. Chelsea have to be winning this game. And I actually think rather than seeing it as like pressure... I think it's a great opportunity for us to put in a really convincing performance because although we've won in recent weeks, there actually have been few really convincing wins for Chelsea in many months. I mean, when was the last time you looked at a Chelsea team against a Premier League opponent in a Premier League game where we've convincingly swatted them aside and, and come out of the game feeling really, really confident and some of our key attacking players have, have really dominated things? And yeah, that's been the bizarre thing about this year is we've had games like where Cole Palmer and Nicholas Jackson have looked amazing, right? And they've been players that have stood up, but there's been these wild lapses and swings in games. And Chelsea, again, you're thinking about this running. 
those things are going to cost Chelsea. You can't keep doing that within games and expect to get away with it. But there are there is great opportunity here for me when I'm looking at this team. I'm looking at who Burnley are. I'm looking at their struggles to compete in the Premier League, their lack of physicality. So if Chelsea play a more direct game, I think there is absolute room and opportunity to exploit that. And also some of the players who got some real boost during the international break. So my team, you have to factor in, of course, injuries, but there are some players available. And I also do think there are some players who deserve to start this game based on recent performances. So in goal, obviously, Petrovic. For me, unless Petrovic gets injured, unless he gets suspended, this is the first choice goalkeeper for the rest of the season. And I'm going to keep on saying that because I don't know what the argument is against it. Because as we saw again against Leicester, pretty international break. Pochettino, I don't know how much more evidence he needs that he's got a first choice keeper. His name is not Robert Sanchez. And uh, we won't see that probably. that This question will not become relevant unlikely until that semi-final against Man City but to me it's just obvious then moving on to to right back Malo Gusto holding the fort until Reese James is back and doing a fine job at it Axel Dazassi I think will keep his place in central defense alongside Benoit Badiashil who is actually off that injury list and you know I prefer him starting this game on the left side of Chelsea's defense other than Thiago Silva that was a back two that had that brilliant dominant performance away at Aston Villa and because of Benoit's injury since we haven't been able to see it that much so hopefully we can see if Trev is not fully ready for this game. Uh, ben Chilwell got a knock with England international duty and Kukurea has been playing the last two games so I suspect that Kukurea will keep his place. In central midfield, I mean it is slightly risky because you have both Moises Caicedo and especially Enzo Fernandez returning late from international duty but because of the lack of options in this area, I do think that Enzo and Caicedo will start this game then maybe you're looking later in the game of how you could rotate off the bench to then maybe, you know, move Gallagher a little bit deeper if you need to. Because the option, again, the options in this area, very threadbare in terms of central midfielders. You know, even players that, you know, you could promote from the academy or ones that have been in and around the first team, like Castledine, for instance, are players that you'd, you'd sort of more associate playing further up the pitch. So it's been a really difficult area I think for for Pochettino in recent weeks the free binder striker I think obviously Cole Palmer this guy is contributing goals and assists on a regular basis when he plays he impacts the game and I, I think just praying and hoping he remains fit because he is the difference maker and I think in this type of game there's a real nice parallel because I believe he scored his first Premier League goal first Chelsea goal against Burnley from the penalty spot back in October which feels like a long way away now given how far Cole Palmer has come as a Chelsea player since that day and just a, an amazing player to watch at his best. I, I think Gallagher keeps his place at, at, as number 10 here. If, if Chukwameka was fully fit, then I think there would have been a shout for that. But I think Gallagher keeps his place. Left wing for me has got to be Mikhailo Mudrik. He scored a historic goal for Ukraine, obviously, to get them to Euros um, this, this summer. And you look at his form in recent weeks and yes, partly that has been him playing a more central role. But, you know, I also think that there is room for him to rotate with the centre forward in this formation, you know, and obviously that's going to be Nicholas Jackson. So Jackson likes to drift to the left. I think Madrid could easily go into a cent central position. But then I also look at the the way Chelsea easily exploited Burnley, especially out wide, Vitinho at the fullback. And, and they just really struggled when Chelsea played out wide. And I think when you look at a player like Mudrik, when you're looking at his speed, how much of a difference that could make and how those two players could really impact things. So I'd be excited to see Mudrik start. And I think it's it's important in a game like this to give Mudrik that start because Sterling playing is a political move. I don't think it's one based off form. I think it's one based off trying to, you know, say again to maybe Chelsea fans, you know, listen, Sterling's going to be over the long term and Sterling wants to prove himself again. And I want Sterling to do well. I want any Chelsea player to do well. But we're not, again, we're not talking about performance or output here. Sterling has not provided that, unfortunately, in recent weeks compared to Mikhailo Mudrik, who, when you contrast that with the lack of starts, the lack of minutes, looks like a more impactful player. So for me, he has to start. And as I've already said, Jackson starting this game too. He has, I believe he's, um, he didn't score obviously against Leicester, but he set up the first uh, for Marco Correa. I think he had a really decent game against Leicester actually and looks such a, Again, an influential player. I think it's kind of gone off the radar a little bit that he hasn't had just a good 
a good season or a decent season. I think he's integral to the way Chelsea play, the way his movement, the way he's able to open up space for others because he can drift naturally to the left. I think his hold-up play and his physicality has improved as, as the season has gone on. So I think this is another great opportunity for him to get on the score sheet. So that is my team. Let me know yours in the comments below and I'll see you again very soon. All the best.